scale, it was my first attempt at anything close to the size it was. The biggest hurdle for me, I think, was designing it and really trying to get my ideas on paper. It's never been something I do when it comes to painted work. I like to be a bit more creative and see where the wall takes me. The idea, I guess, of the whole thing was for these foreign students learning English to look at this mural and ask questions, you know, and add that easily identifiable imagery that really if you asked anyone that was born and raised in New Zealand, they would be able to tell you a story about what each of those images represented. From working with the council, I had a certain sense of this is for everybody. You have to be so careful when painting another culture's imagery. So I, I definitely didn't want to step on any toes, especially when I had good intentions behind it. So it's always a risk with what you do. When I look at my heritage of graffiti, yeah, the letters to the general public, it may be something very simple, but by painting that, it actually represents a whole culture, you know, it represents 30, 40 years of development that got to that point of why we do it in that way. On the right end, I used one section to do the, uh, what we would call a throw up style of names. All those names mentioned were graffiti artists that had pieces featuring on that wall at the time would have been illegal but still very well done graffiti. I could imagine it being quite insulting having a young Auckland tagger coming down and getting an opportunity to do a mural that essentially covers up a lot of Christchurch history.